set. Hey, what's going on you guys? It's Keenan Briggs, athlete, coach, and mentor. The question of the week today is, well, it's not really a question, but basically it's how do you continue being successful in track and fields after you finish college? Most athletes tend to quit after college because it's just too hard. If you don't know how to manage yourself, it's going to be very hard to be successful in this industry. Now, let's be honest. Odds are, if you ran track in college, you're spoiled. So was I. I woke up, went to practice, went to class, everything was regimented and scheduled. I just kind of went with the flow. I ate at certain times, my homework was done, everything was pretty much built around track and field. When you get in the real world, it's a little bit different. Everything is based around the world and you have to squeeze in when you're going to train. First things first when it comes to being successful as a post-collegiate track and field athlete. One, you need money, a lot of money. A post-collegiate season can range anywhere between five dollars to $10,000 just to get you around. So let's break down the cost. Let's say you want to do about 10 to 15 track meets. Each track meet costs around 20 bucks to do. Now let's say you're from California like me and there are no indoor facilities. Now if you want to compete at the indoor championship, you have to have an indoor qualifying mark, which means you've got to fly somewhere. You can either go to New Mexico, you can go to the Fresno Indoor, which is pretty close. Um, I like going to Seattle, Washington. At the end of the day, it's going to cost you at least $100 to $150 just for a hotel. It's going to cost you between $200 to $300 just for a flight. So you're looking at at least $350 just to get to a location to compete. Plus, you have to add in your food and expenses and whatever else you may be doing out there and that's just for one meet. Now let's say you do qualify for indoor championships. That's dishing out another 500 plus dollars. Now there are a lot of things you gotta think about. Where are you living? Are you living at home? Are you working? Are you working a part-time job? Are you working a full-time job? When it comes to working and training, one huge element I had to adjust was I was used to training every day on set days. There's going to be a huge level of inconsistency. Now if you accept inconsistency and you make sure that you're consistent with inconsistency then you essentially have created a consistent workout when are you gonna train are you gonna train before you go to work or are you gonna train after you go to work can you handle training after working a eight to nine hour day plus the commute if you're working part-time is that enough to pay for gas are you gonna be paying for your own coach there are a lot of things that are going to be affecting you and you have to make sure you balance all those things and when you balance them correctly then you can start to try to balance the training schedule the main focus is keep your goals set make sure they're detailed the more detailed the better and just keep training and your body will end up being where it's supposed to be as a post collegiate athlete you don't have to really focus too much more on overall strength training and training every day and getting stronger in the gym you have the basic strength to be at a national level now you want to fine tune certain things and see where you can improve to then you can reassess yourself and figure out what needs to be adjusted and changed so in college your work schedule is track and then everything else when you get out of college it becomes life and then everything else now if you make track a priority the challenge is going to be when do you cut off your social life? When do you cut off working too many hours? When do you cut off telling people, no, you can't do certain things because you have to continue training? When do you cut off the food you eat? There's a lot of aspects that you really have to dive into that can really affect your overall performance and the outcome. One huge factor that I didn't know about was at the indoor championships in 2011, I actually pulled my quad and I did not have insurance. So I was basically stuck with um, an injury and trying to figure out you know, how to repair it. Luckily my quad tear was only level 2, which means that it was still attached and it didn't require any type of surgery. But I was rehabbed at Hogue Hospital with Dr. Ken Yoshina and he did a great job with getting me back in shape. It took me about 14 weeks to really get back to the level that I was competing at. But if I didn't have that specific type of training and specific type of rehab, 
then I may not have been at the same level I was before. In 2011, I qualified for the USA Outdoor Championships. I believe I was top 24, and top 24 typically are the athletes that qualify to go to the meet. Well, that year they decided to only go with the A qualifying athletes. I had a high B, but it was not close enough to the A standard. And I already bought a ticket, and the ticket might have been around $300. I actually didn't get the insurance for a cancellation. So when I realized I wasn't going to be competing, instead of just going anyway and enjoying the atmosphere and everything else, that was going to be extra money for the hotel and food and everything else, I decided just to cut my losses there and just eat that $300. At the end of the day, it's a very challenging, challenging aspect. And if you're not, if you don't understand how to market yourself, how to sell yourself to sponsors, how to prepare yourself mentally on these meets, it can be really scary. You know, for example, when I travel to USA Championships indoors and outdoors, and most of these big meets, I was by myself. Now, as you go, if you're a talkative person, if you're an extrovert, you are going to meet people and you're going to make friends and you can call them and say, hey, I'm going to be at this hotel. And you can actually meet them when you get there to kind of calm you. But, um, but if, if you're not, it's going to be a really big challenge to be able to get yourself on the board, to be able to make sure your marks are correct, to be able to prepare you mentally because at a stage that big, it's not just run and jump or just get out the blocks and run as fast as you can. There's a lot of things that you need to coach for. But at the end of the day, just whatever you choose to do, stick with it. Till next time. Remember to click that subscribe button. I have new videos coming out every Tuesday and Thursday. For very detailed and exclusive information, make sure you visit KeenanBriggs.com.